Hey guys, we are going to graph a polynomial equation. Okay. Now, whenever we're being asked to graph something, we always have the option of picking a point for X, sorry, a number for X, plugging it in, getting a Y and graphing that ordered pair, right? But that can be very time consuming, or we might not know what points to plug in that give us a good um, idea of what the graph looks like, right? So there is a better way. Okay, we're gonna follow a couple steps. First, we're going to factor if needed and find our zeros. Second, we're gonna look at end behavior. Third, we're gonna look at multiplicities. And fourth is an optional step that we'll talk about when we get there, okay? All right, so first I need a factor, but guess what? We are already factored here, right? None of these can be factored anymore. I could write out X minus one twice since it's squared, but I don't really need to do that. Okay. So good. Next we are looking for our zeros. Okay. When I say our zeros, we're looking for where our graph crosses the X axis. Okay. And where my graph crosses the X axis, Y is equal to zero, right? So to figure that out, we just need to set this equal to zero. Now, when we do that, we end up just setting each parenthesis equal to zero, right? I could set negative two equal to zero, but that's not true. So we don't need to worry about that, right? So I'm going to set each of these equal to zero, okay? So, oh, this is how we find our zeros, okay? We're going to set X minus four equal to zero, X plus two equal to zero, and x minus one equal to zero. Now you'll notice, like we said at the beginning, that there's really two x minus ones, right? Because of that squared. So I could write it twice, but I'm just gonna put a little note here that says I have a multiplicity of two, okay? Which you might be like, I've never heard that word before, but it sounds familiar now. That's in our third step, okay? So I'm gonna solve now for these zeros. For this one, I would add four to both sides, right? Get X equals four. On the next one, I would subtract two from both sides and get X equals negative two. And on this one, I would add one to both sides and get X equals one. And remember, there's really that answer twice, okay? All right, we found our zeros. So now we're going to graph those on our X axis, okay? So I've got one, two, three, four. I know my graph crosses there. It crosses at negative two and it crosses at one, okay? So it's like, great, I know my graphs cross there, but what else does it look like, right? So next we're going to look at multiplicities. Nope, I lied, and behavior first. <laughs> We're going to look at end behavior first. So for example, from this point, I want to know if my graph goes up or down from here. And also on this side, does my graph go up or down? Okay. So I'm going to show you a little chart. If this is like, uh, I don't want to read that. I'm going to do it for you, but this is for my people who like to read it. Take a screenshot of this. If you're on a cell phone or take a picture, if this is helpful for you. Okay. If not, I'm going to use words to tell you it now. Okay. So we start with our right side. Okay. And when I'm on my right side, trying to figure out if it ends up or down, I look at my leading coefficient, which in this case is negative two. Okay. Keeping in mind, if there were numbers in front of these X's, I would need to multiply it out to find the leading coefficient. But since these guys don't have numbers in front of them, my leading coefficient is negative two. Okay. But all I really care about is if it's positive or negative. Okay. If it's positive, the right side of my graph is going to end up. If it's negative, it's going to end down. So I see here that it's negative. So I'm going to put a little arrow here in pencil that says this side of the graph is going to end down. Okay. Next, we look at the left side of our graph and we look at the degree. Okay. That is the highest exponent. So you might be tempted to say, oh, the highest exponent is two, right? Because I only see one exponent. But it's the highest exponent when it's all multiplied together, not factored, okay? But I don't actually have to multiply it all together to figure out what the highest degree is. I can just kind of think about, well, if I were to multiply this, I would have these two X's here, an X here, and an X here. My highest degree would be x to the fourth once I multiplied all of that out, okay? So 
my highest exponent is four. If you're like, how did she get that? Go ahead and multiply it out and make sure you get that X to the fourth, okay? So my degree, my highest exponent is four. But all I really worry about is if it's even or odd, okay? If it's even, my graph is going to end on the left side the same way as the right. If it's odd, it's going to end the opposite way. So in this case, it would end up. But we are even, so that means it's going to end the same way as the right side. So the left side is also going to end down, okay? All right, from here, we figured out our end behavior, right? But from here, I need to look at my multiplicities, okay? So like we were saying, this one has a multiplicity of two because I really could have gotten that answer twice, right? I could have written X minus one equals zero twice since this is squared, but I just made a little note instead that said that one was really there twice. Both of these have a multiplicity of one, okay? If you have an odd multiplicity, that means that my graph is going to go straight through those points. It might be a slightly different curve depending on if it's a one or a three, but your teacher probably doesn't care too much about that right now, okay? So basically, if you have an odd multiplicity, it's going to go through one, three, five, it's going to go straight through that point. If you have an even multiplicity like here, where this one is really there twice, your graph is going to bounce on that point like a parabola, okay? So on this part, it's going to bounce and go up instead of going straight through, okay? Or if it were the other way, it could bounce on the bottom, okay? So for this one, I know my graph ends down and... At negative two, it's just a multiplicity of one, so it's gonna go through there. And then at one, I have the multiplicity of two, so it's going to bounce. And then at four, it's just a multiplicity of one, so it's gonna go straight through. So it's gonna kinda look like an M, right? So we're starting here. We're gonna bounce there and go down there, okay? And that is what my graph looks like, okay? Now you might remember I said there was an optional fourth step, okay? Your optional fourth step is to plug in some other points because I don't know exactly how high those bumps go, right? That's actually why I didn't put any tick marks on the y-axis because I don't know exactly how high those are. Now, for now, your teacher may just want to have a general graph like this. If they do want to know where some of those points are on those bumps, you can go ahead and plug in some points like negative one, zero, two, and three to figure out how high those bumps actually are. Okay. So that is that optional fourth step. Okay. All right. I hope this made sense. If you need some more examples, I've got lots. I will link a playlist for you. Thanks.